Water is probably going to be the largest impact area of uh, the various impacts that we've assessed for climate change. We expect that we'll have uh, increases in extreme events, droughts on the dry side, floods on the wet side, and changes in patterns. Water systems require a tremendous amount of energy. So anytime we can use water more efficiently, we have the opportunity to avoid energy inputs into that system. Of course, in doing that, greenhouse gas emissions associated with energy production are saved in the process. Green infrastructure is a term used to describe the use of plants and actually ecosystems to uh, filter pollutants and then slow down the rainwater so the water is uh, able to soak in to the soil and recharge the groundwater. It's applicable in virtually any climate type. We use a combination of techniques from swales to green roofs, rainwater tanks, permeable surfaces that allow the water to percolate through, essentially to mimic natural watershed systems. Behind us here we have San Nicolas Wetland, which is a project that was created to treat low flow storm water. So over irrigation, the first flush from a storm event, all that kind of water that has the most nutrients in it goes into the wetland and has a chance for bacteria to act on it, for algae to take up the nutrients. And so by the time it comes out, it's sort of cleaned basically. We also are creating habitat, involving students in restoration, supporting all kinds of wildlife. And so it's been a you know, really great model project. NRDC produced uh, a report a couple of years ago, which I co-authored, called A Clear Blue Future, uh, which investigates low impact development. We calculated the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that would be avoided if we were able to capture a greater percentage of the rainwater. We came out with some very impressive numbers in terms of the amount of water that can be captured and utilized beneficially and the amount of energy that would be saved relative to the alternative, importing water from distant sources or desalting ocean water. So to be able to capture more water and get it into those groundwater supplies is an extremely important part of our water supply reliability strategy. Fresh water is a really limiting resource here in Southern California. Any fresh water around is precious. And so instead of treating it like a waste product, we can treat that water upstream by creating wetlands and bioswales and different things like that. Businesses and individuals and other people could incorporate these ideas even on a small scale. You can build cisterns. You can make opportunities for your roof water to run through a small swale before it goes into the drain at the side of the road. We're all part of this big paved landscape and if we can all catch the water in the little places that it falls, we can easily take this waste product and turn it into something beneficial. One of the things to think about with regard to green infrastructure and rainwater harvesting strategies is the multiple benefits that we can gain from improving habitat, to capturing water that can be beneficially used and improve water supply reliability, prevent pollution of receiving waters, rivers, lakes, coastal waters, providing jobs uh, for people to change landscapes to provide these benefits, and cost savings. Uh, some of the studies uh, that have been done here in the United States indicate that uh, significant amounts of money can be saved by improving resource efficiency uh, while we save water, save energy, and reduce pollution.